Hello. What's up? What's up? We live yet? We live. Oh shit. Put these titties oh, on my what? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Paco? What's up? What's up, Shane? How you doing? I'm Dandy. Welcome, welcome, my- welcome. Hmm? I clean my everything just for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a way. What a way to intro the show, you know? Of course. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what show is this. Uh, but yeah, welcome. <laughs> I'm Jess. And, uh, you know, I'm Shannon from She Gets a Pod. This is Paco. You know what I'm saying? Come on. For sure. On. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, hey. Uh, welcome to uh, another episode of uh, Nuts and Guts podcast uh well one of my favorite uh new podcasters new people that uh that has been a light at the end of the tunnel as far as my podcast career <laughs> so, uh no for I, um i've been shouting you out on different platforms and my own platform and i just want to say uh thank you man like your energy is unmatched and uh, it's, it's very, very refreshing. You know what I mean? So keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. So we'll be talking you know about today. We'll be I don't know. Today. You um, you had sent me an uh, Instagram, and I don't know the girl name, but I was just pretty much. A, um, somebody else uh, posted her vid- the video. So Don Diva Magazine posted the video. It was basically her live, but her live name is not showing, so I don't know her name. But tell tell them about it. Give them the intro. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> the, what it, um what the intro was uh, why he really don't want you, right? Or yeah. why he want why why you why you not married, pretty much, or why he's not picking you, yeah, or why he's not faithful. Um, or, um, it was a, it was a bunch of stuff that she said, um, to unpack, you know what I mean? I guess start with, um, first of all, do you agree with the things that she was saying? I agree with everything she said. Um, she was mainly talking about women who want to completely consume a man or, a young male growing into his manhood, wanting to consume him in ways of, I want to be the only girl in your life. I want you to cut off the other girls you're talking to or the other girls you're interested in. Um, I want you to always come home to me. I want you to um, tell me everything. I want you to be here with me. I want to check your phone. I want to know what you're doing. Just, Just being fucking overbearing. Yeah. And um, not really having anything to bring to the table to this man on giving him a reason to want to be around. Yeah. Well, I think with, with my experience of uh, with, with overbearing uh, women, um, mm-hmm. I said last week on the show, I said, uh, I said, I said, you know, for the women that don't have friends, that's, that's your problem. Yeah. That you that you can't get along with other women. Now it's a difference if you just like, hey, I just kind of like sticking to myself, but I do have um some associates and some 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 girls that you love to hang and kick it with, or you know, um it's uh, and, and then for the for the people that feel like, oh, it's you know, every like every group of girls is messy or something like that. I don't believe that. You know what I mean? I've 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 seen so many healthy friendships, relationships with women, and it's a beautiful thing to see. Not every group of women is messy or want to be all in your business or don't want you to uh to succeed in your relationship. And speaking of which, how much influence do you think 
uh, do your do a group of friends have on a person that uh, wants to get married or has a or just say you and five of your homegirls and ain't none of y'all in relationships. Mm-hmm. And then one of y'all get into a relationship and then I guess pretty much do you have an answer for why do it seem like women kind of attack the girl that kind of is trying to escape out of that circle to to uh, latch on to her new husband. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to uh, you saying, um, you know, women having a group of messy friends and you don't think that that's a thing. And I don't feel like it is. So I agree with you. But on the other hand of women not having friends and being in a relationship, she might want to consume that man. I've had a reverse. I've been in a relationship with multiple men who don't have friends. And then what you what you do, where you at, um, who you talking to becomes a like a whole world that they trying to swallow you into. And it's just like, I can't keep kind of like checking in with you. I can't keep um, coming over here. I, I don't want to be with you every day. And it's not because you're doing something wrong. I just don't want to be up under you every day. And to me, what that does for me now is that makes me like, okay, if I'm checking out somebody and I want to see like who they are as a person, do they hang out with a friend? Do they have friends? Do they tell me about people around them? If they don't, to me, that's kind of like a red flag. Like you don't mm. know how to um, have compassion for other people. You don't know how to um, be around other people outside of yourself, outside of what you got going on. So that means if we ever um, get into a relationship, you're going to fucking consume me. And the days where I don't want to be around you, you're going to take it as like a low blow, where it's really not a low blow. I think uh, the best relationships have fucking space. And um, going back to your next question of, um, you know, having friends who are not in a relationship or the relationships that they've had haven't been successful. And then you find um, a man that you're interested in and your relationship is going great. Your relationship is going to become those unhappy, miserable friends of yours relationship. And they're going to undermine it. And they're going to say, oh, you going on a little date with your man. Why can't you just come out with us? Or why are you staying home with him? Or he's going to become the enemy and they're going to become like, but we were here first. And to me, that's petty playground recess ass shit. When you, when you get to like your late twenties or your thirties and you're trying to develop some type of relationship with the opposite sex, just to see like what it is in life that you want. And, um, me being in relationships and my friends being like engaged for like, uh, five years and nothing's happening. And sometimes they have great days. Sometimes they don't have great days, but they automatically for me became like my example of what a relationship is supposed to be. Cause I really want to know what has kept them together this long. I really want to know what has kept them together for 15 years. I really want to know what got them to the level of being engaged or how they interact with each other. And then I've seen friends, best friends who are in a relationship for fucking 10 years with a person that's been doing them dirty. And then in return, they do them dirty. And then you see them like three months later get engaged. And I'm just like, how you getting engaged to somebody and you fucking a married man that live in Florida? So no. I've, I've, I've seen all of it. And to me, I don't feel like anybody on the outside, whether it's friends, family, can tell you what to do in your relationship. The only person or people who can direct what happens in your relationship should be the people that you are with. I agree. I like, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm just one, I'm just tired of seeing it. You know what I mean? And and I and I think people need to focus on they need to focus on why they can't find somebody. You know, and then it's like I, I remember um take 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 for example my my last relationship. I was in my last relationship for five years. Now I have um, tons of friends 
uh, mm-hmm. tons of cousins and like cousins like brothers and you know um but I was in my relationship and you know sometimes your single friends don't do the things that your married friends do right or 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 people or people in relationships do so you you automatically going to fall back just off the strength of you know you established a relationship with somebody and um out of out of respect for the relationship um you know you're not going to do the same things that you normally would as a single person now my problem is this is this is my problem my problem is like what when a person is actually going through something like i lost uh, my mom through this process and so i wasn't feeling like myself like i wasn't happy all the time and I, I you know what I mean like I was actually going through something but the person that I was with um, had a busy life and wasn't there for me all the time you know what I mean mm-hmm. and so eventually you know um, other people was able to creep into the mix yeah you, you know what I mean? Because I was looking for something that I wasn't getting from that person. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's like, yo, I, like, yeah, man, hey, I, I get it. You know, you know, you call me whatever you want to. But at the same time, though, I, I felt homegirl on, on the IG when she was just pretty much saying, like, you know, do you know what type of uh I, I don't like the word she uses as, as demons or whatever, but do you know mm-hmm. his sex drive? Do you know uh, the uh, uh, the type of time that your man need? Do you know, um, can you even keep him entertained? Yeah. <laughs> can, you know what I'm saying? Can, can you fulfill all his needs? Are you, know you I mean? entertained? Yeah. <laughs> but so, like, I don't, I don't feel like what you said is bad, where you said um, you needed someone at a time where the person you had wasn't showing up in those spaces. Listen, that is a tricky area because a lot of women claim they want a man and they want them to be solely for them, but they don't know how to be solely for that man. And that's that solely for that man, whether y'all married or not whether y'all have goals to be more or not, if you're in this relationship, that means you have to take him when his days are great, when his days are shitty, um, when, uh, you know, he's feeling himself or maybe he's having an attitude. It's all of those things because that shit is not going to be different just because you all get married one day. You have to know how to flow through your person's wave. And um, I met my second kid's dad at a time where um, he was moving from Milwaukee because of the uh, just the environment he was in where it was either on some somebody go kill me or I just need to get up out of here. And um, his mom was in Atlanta and he came down to visit in Atlanta and that whole transition out of like a defensive or just um uh making making somebody feel guilty for changing or or doing something that's going to better themselves his uh baby moms at the time was telling them that he ain't shit because he lost his job or you ain't this because you ain't got a job or you ain't got money blah 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 and you just you know gonna go down to Atlanta and not do shit and he had that constantly like every day in the back of his mind but at the time when I met him, he was putting on a front like he's single. But it was mm. never like when I met him, we're going to date. It wasn't like that. It was like, tell me who the fuck you are. And then, you know, tell me like what you want. And um, it was on some straight friendship shit. But those holes that she was giving kind of like pushed them separately, like apart, right? So you're mm-hmm. making space for someone new to come fill in those voids of when this person doesn't feel like 
their person is showing up. So he was basically filling me in on, I want to feel good about myself. Let me call her. I want to, you know, hang out today and feel like I'm work shit. Let me go see if she's free. And it went from like a fucking friendship to more and more and more. That's fucking 15 plus years of that. Whether she felt like they were together or in a relationship or had plans to be more. When I was 18, she was telling me they have plans to to get married. Let's let's mm-hmm. move forward. Let's move forward. We now have a three-year-old and she's still not married. But she's still sitting up under this man. And I have nothing against her if that's what she feels like she want to do. Because some people in life have this, oh, I'm going to wear you down to get what I want. And sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes it's, let me accept this person for who they are. And to me, I felt like he would have discussions with me that he shouldn't be having with me. You should be having with the woman that's living in your house that wants a ring, that wants to move forward with you. But he would sit there and tell me how he doesn't believe in monogamy, which is fine. I have no problem with people who do not believe in monogamy. Cool. But I feel like out of respect, you need to let anybody that deals with you with goals of you being more know that you don't believe in monogamy because then y'all waste each other. Let them, right. And let, let that other person decide if they want to get, get, get with that program. You know what I'm saying? Um, Right. on, On that note, we can, we can talk about that too, because my, I remember, uh, you know, the experience that uh that I had like like my my ex wife, you know I don't know. Uh, some of these women they they walk around patting themselves on the back like they're the best parents in the world and mm-hmm. um, I you know from what from what I hear, worried on the street. I mean she's married now and, and happy and everything, but uh from what I hear, I was well, I guess what she's running around telling people is that I was the uh. Uh, that I was the problem, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> or uh, you know how people feel like they rose from the ashes when they deal with somebody? <laughs> like, like, yeah, <laughs> like you ain't that sweet, motherfucker. Like you, know what I'm right? <laughs> you, 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 like yo, hey, and you know, and, and a lot of times men take take all the the blame for everything. You know what I'm saying? I get it, but. Similar, I had a similar situation where it was just like, um, like yo, like in my profession, it's um, it's uh, predominantly white, mm-hmm. and so every contractor I ever worked for was always the only black guy. You know what I'm saying? And and when we talk when we talk about privilege, um, mm-hmm. I remember working for a contractor. It was a guy that came home from jail studied plumbing in jail got out you know after doing like three or four years and got um he got a a, a truck uh a gas card the whole time like i've been at this company three years at this time yeah you know what i mean and i wi- i actually witnessed him pretty much just move right past me you know what I'm saying? And so did he have more experience than me? No. Hey, well, I was showing him shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I just I just <laughs> had more years, more experience. Right. And so you deal with that for so so many years. You's like, yo, man, I gotta figure this out. I really love what I do, mm-hmm. but I really gotta try to do this on my own. So this is around 2000. But 20 years of 2007, 2009, I'm trying to figure it out. And so I wasn't working. And I was, me and and her was um, uh, was together or whatever. And like the the whole like, yeah, she's college educated. And um, I'm going to put it like this. Like I know a lot of people um, that traditionally follows a format of their life. You know, mm-hmm. if they don't, if they, if they not where they supposed to be, they beat themselves up or, or if you not where they at, they look down on you. And so mm-hmm. I got a lot of that from her, like just, uh, just like verbal abuse. 
Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And uh and the verbal abuse went both ways, but it started with her. And yeah. I'm not pointing the finger at her, but that's the reality of it. And it was just like pretty much I was like a a, a almost like you you look you would look at me like she would look at me like I was a bum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was trying to make a way for myself. And I eventually figured it out, but I figured it out without her in the picture. And that you know what I mean? Let me go ahead. Let me talk about that. Women never talk about um, the man before the not having. They love when a man has, but they're never willing. Not all, most are not willing to support a man through his transition. And the transition should be you're out of work or you got laid off or you're still looking for work. Let me build you up. Let me speak life into you. Let me let you know where you're appreciated still so you can feel good about yourself to keep the fucking momentum. You would rather talk down to someone who has been with you still with you, still around you, and let's say if y'all have kids still around the kids even if they're feeling less than because they're not having anything to give um, money wise and not build them up and then let him feel like shit uh, struggle you don't really have um, any happiness in the mix you just want to feel elite because you're not going through that issue But on the other end, if it was a man who had a steady job and a woman lost her job, she would look to have a man that supported her regardless of if she had a job or not. Guess what, Sharon? Oh, go ahead. It needs needs to be the same on both sides. And I I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I paid for our wedding from working for myself. See? You know what I'm saying? Like, I paid, like, so by the time we got married, yo, things had got slow. You know what I'm saying? I had to, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. So, um, so, you know, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, a man got, um, um, I got pride, you know, you don't do shit like that. So, so motherfuckers like her mother was in the mix. I know. And this is what I was, just, we were just talking about, like the group of people that surround you. That's not happy. Mm-hmm. And so her mom was calling, was just like, like yo, you know, um, it's a it's an ad in the paper for this uh, security uh, guard job. Yeah, and you talk about <laughs> you know how, like you know how somebody head pop from they you know see <laughs> you just being so mad or so yeah. angry, like my head pop, mm-hmm. and, and it was just like you know the disrespect. Like I don't. First of all, I'm going to just say this. Like, I don't really care about your little paper that hang on the wall. And that's for anybody that's fucking listening. Listen. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Hold on. I ain't done yet. Like, hold on. Like, hold on. Let me, let me, let me talk about shit. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I don't care about that shit. By the time we got divorced, the attorney was like, he was like, he, he was like, he was like an average plumber make a mm-hmm. hundred grand a year. Mm-hmm. That's and 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 you know on a you know a Midwest East Coast part of the East Coast that's good money. You go out West Cali, you probably struggling, you know. Yeah. But but what I'm saying is, he let her know, like he like some sometimes you got to hear it from somebody else, mm-hmm. like you stupid, mm. and then after boom. After all this bullshit, all the teardowns, you know, pretty much go hold a stop sign and direct traffic, like all these, like little, like instead of like like you just said, instead of uplifting or like, yo, well, let's try to figure this out together. Right. You you concern more about how you how like the lifestyle that you live in. Hmm. Mind you, niggas one starving. You know yeah. what I'm saying, nigga. You know what I'm saying. Motherfuckers have food, clothes, and shelter. Whether if it came from my pocket or her pocket, shit was getting taken care of. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Daycare was getting paid for the whole night. So a motherfucker to uh, sit up here and drive you crazy about finances when just because they can't live the lifestyle they feel like they should be able to live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that pushes men away. And exactly that's exactly what happened. And then like a month later, this motherfucker started hitting me up telling some, hey, you know, after she filed for divorce, like, hey, you know, can we work this out and let's let's try to be a family? At this point, like, bitch, I don't want nothing to do with you. I'm on lawyers and shit, unnecessary shit. Do you, do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> do you understand this motherfucking pawn? The the wedding ring got bought her, and to pay for the attorney. And then a month later, and then a month later was like, yo, I want to work things out. Like, 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 bro, you doing too much. Not, not. And then, and and I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you my problem. Yeah. Why he don't want to be with you. And the problem is, motherfuckers' attitudes be so fucked up, you turn the man off. Like yeah. ill. This is what this is the 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 pickings I, I get. With your fucked up ass attitudes and 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 um and you always nitpicking about what you don't have or what you what what you can't get from a man and and how you want to treat a man and then you finally meet a good man you don't even know how to deal with. Mm -hmm. Or or even how to recognize that shit. You don't recognize that shit until you got to deal with the shit that's out there. Yeah. Well, you, like, like I like I said, people people always comment comment on my finance situation. Man, I went through hell and back and forth with this shit. Hell yeah, yeah I deserve to get up and go where the fuck I want to go, and I have to li- listen to nobody fucking mouth. Yeah, I put up with hell, man. And, and like, yo, man, I, I come from good stock. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you meet a woman nowadays; these mother they ain't never been to a date to the lake. You, you I ain't never to a day to a lake, uh, Paco. <laughs> <laughs> what is a day? You, know, <laughs> well, you get what I'm saying, though? And it's just like, yo, man, like, yo, this is just right up the street, yo. Like, you, y'all don't come here, you don't get ice cream? No, I got and ice cream. Like, no, no, I understand that, but it's just like <laughs> this is what you got to deal with. Yeah. Um, do you think it's? Do you think a bulk of the issue is <sighs> a lot of ladies, women, young girls not growing up seeing their mothers find solution with their fathers or find solution with other men in the household as, as example. Yeah. I I totally agree. I right, history just keep repeating itself. My um <laughs> I had to bust my, my daughter bubble the other day when she was yeah. over. She was talking about her grandmother. And yeah. she was like, yeah, um she's like my my grandmother was uh was uh she was married a couple of times and I was like I was like try eight times um <laughs> I'm not gonna say my kid day but I was yeah. like but, but but I was like try eight times and she was like dad you exaggerate I'm like nah I'm not I'm not and so when you grow up and you Muslim for a couple of years you Christian you know what I'm saying whatever Whatever the new dudes say, the new rules is. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like you said, though, this is my that that was my fault though, because I didn't see, the, I didn't pay attention to the signs. I didn't. Mm. What are the signs? Where I, I, sh- I should have looked at her mama, yo. Oh shit! I done mm. cussed her mama out. I done said that on the show before. Like she got all she got because they just her mom just do too much, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she didn't she didn't talk too much shit about me to my kid. And so I just I don't respect her at all. You know what I Listen, mean? I might so. not have 
the best relationships. I will, hey, I, but, it's it's but, to the point where I will I would pay for her funeral. You know what I'm saying? If something was to happen to her. <laughs> 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 hey, you know hey, y'all keep the life insurance, buddy. I got it. Don't. <laughs> what y'all want? Y'all want a gold gold casket? <laughs> yeah, whatever color casket y'all want. You. <laughs> But you know what? You know what? You you made a good point because even even with that, that's a fucking teaching tool. Like your grandmother got married eight times and you don't even know. Not saying that her grandmother would never tell her in the future, but you would never know that. And shit, clearly her grandmother didn't learn shit on the second one, on the fourth one, on the seventh one. So to me, I feel like that's a lot of info. That's a lot of game. That's a lot of lessons learned. Let me tell you how I fucked up. So when you get in relationships or possibly a marriage, you know not to do this thing. I don't think women are forthcoming about their faults, which in turn turn into their daughter's fault which in turn to turn into their daughter or their son's fault because that generation back there likes to don't be you don't be telling nobody our family business don't be telling nobody our business but your kids need to know your fucking business to a point where it's going to help them your kids need to know how to fucking uh compromise in a relationship for that shit to work how to come to solutions when there are problems and stop talking about the fucking problems as if it's going to solve themselves i don't think women are forthcoming about their faults my mom wasn't transparent to me about her and my father's relationship and marriage until i was 28 29 years old and by that time i would i already had my first hit yeah. And that don't have the- that don't have to be our story though. It doesn't, and I keep telling people that it doesn't have to be our story. You know, and and even like with my kid, like like you said, be as transparent with your children without being. You know, it's a way that that you don't have to say everything to them because they still have innocent ears. And with with my kid, when she say. she said to me, we had a real last conversation a few weeks ago, and it was just like, Dad, like I remember. You had you having a lot of girlfriends, mm-hmm. and mind you, my my child is thirteen. Mm-hmm. So, and it, no matter what you try to think you're trying to do, or you know, sneak somebody in the house, <laughs> no matter, you no know, matter, hey, put the shoes in the bedroom. Like no matter what you try yeah. to sneak or hide from your kid, they watch and pick up on everything. Yeah, and I had to tell her, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your dad used to be a ladies man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you look at me. You look at me. No. Uh, no. <laughs> so I had to tell her, oh, what are you supposed to say? Shut up. Mind your business. And, no, I, t- I said, look. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are, what are you supposed to do? What? what? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's so, I had to just keep it real with her. Like, I to a certain degree, you know what I mean? But they going to figure it out on their own anyway. So what are you mm-hmm. What are you withholding information from them for? You know, what are you hiding? You know what I'm saying? You know, people, you know, it's 13, 14 year olds still think Santa Claus bringing gifts. Like, why are you mm-hmm. just not telling the kids the truth? Yeah. You know, it's it's cool to have an imagination and believe in fairy tales and all this other stuff. Cool. But let them know the truth. Yeah. Because you they go they grow up and then you bet- you turn into this like this hypocrite because you've been telling them lies all their life and now you're trying to tell them that that's not true. You were just telling them that so they could have a good childhood. You don't have no good childhood when you realize everything you you thought was a lie. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I really thought, I really thought that when my mom left my dad, when he went, I think he went to a funeral in Jamaica, and she took that time to pack up her shit in that house in Philly, and and throw out whatever Ola. she. Ola. And, 
Ooh, and and go ahead. <laughs> to the point oh, to the point where that was my Jamaican my dad, accent. Uh, shit. <clears throat> my dad didn't know where we were. This man put up missing kids posters for me and my youngest brother. You know what I'm saying? And to me, um, maybe she felt like because my dad was like super violent and aggressive, she couldn't really confront him and be like, I want to leave. Right? Maybe she felt like that was her comfort zone. Um, but I was under the impression that, you know, my dad took care of the household. We ain't never had lights off. We ain't never needed food. We ain't never needed uh, clothes. But my mom lived in that marriage as a single mother. And my dad was looking at her like property. And my dad looked at me like an obligation. And I think my mom wanted more for um, our life as, as children. And, and that turned out not to be the marriage she wanted. So she did, which I understand. But I didn't understand how like negative and toxic the relationship was where he would like spray things she'll be allergic to in the place where she has to work. He would um, personally like talk down on her to the point where she'll be downstairs sleeping on the sofa that's not comfortable and wake up mad early and cook him breakfast and iron his clothes um, to the points where they couldn't have disagreements or he pulling out his gun and putting it on the table. Like um, I didn't understand that until I was fucking almost 30. And I don't feel like my mother did me any benefit by me having to pull that information out of her. So, I mean, it, it's up to you to be forthcoming. Like, I'm super transparent to my girls about my life. Like, m you know, my, my kid asked me when she was five, why I don't live with any of their dads? Why I don't have a man in my house? And I had to explain to her, you don't, you don't automatically have people around you because you want people around you. You have people around you because you actually like those people. Those people make you feel good and they make your, your life easier. And sometimes the people that you may have kids with don't add to your life. They take away. And sometimes your dad and I, we're better separate. And that's the honest shit. I would never tell my kid, you know, shut up, stop asking me dumb questions. That's not a dumb question. That's a legit question. For sure. And so, guess what? Um, guess, guess what, Shane? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Be transparent. And 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 that's the thing too though. Like my daughter was telling me, she was like, Yeah, you know, my you know, my uh my nana, my mother, um, my papa, and they, they all say, um, you crazy. That's wild. And um and I said, I said I am. And I said, <laughs> I said, <clears throat> I said, uh, especially when it comes to them trying to keep you away from me. I said, yeah. every time they want a trip, I'm a trip or take mm -hmm. a trip. So I don't kill nobody. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, like they not, I, I told her, I said, they not telling you the whole story is yeah. what they doing. Of course, I said, of course your mother can show you some, some wild text messages or some stuff I done said to her. You know what I'm but saying? Are, but she's not hers right exactly and and that's the that's what i hate i hate yeah. people that play victim man that that shit really turned me on and then that it it ultimately turns into the reason why you know people aren't happy true mm -hmm. you know people put on this front you know like i like i look through all the matching pajamas on you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. i don't i don't half of that shit it'd it, it be just for show you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying like I don't like the games the, the manipulation that people do to their kids yeah. is insane to me and it's like it's almost like a culture shock though because I ain't never I ain't never my, my, my people they never did that to none of us mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying if anything it was like go go with that go get out of here yeah. like take them listen I love when their dads <laughs> want them for, you know, can I do this? Yes, you can. Like, when do you need me to get them dressed? Like, I'm, that's cool with me because I know what it's like not having a fucking father at times where I wanted to do absolutely fucking nothing. Right. I know what well, it's like to, to have to to know I had a dad and all I wanted to do was 
hang with this man on the couch. Yeah. And I couldn't. Listen, listen, what to ask, listen, the audience, how how was a person supposed to act when you go to the daycare and you're supposed to pick up your kid and the grandmother to pick up your shorty? So so you can't get him. That's crazy. How, how how are you how like you I want I want to know logically like how are you supposed to control yourself? Of course, I've learned over the years how to control my emotions and and just don't deal with certain people. But like yo, it, I had to learn that though. I didn't have to yeah. go through that as a kid. You know, my my, my people's ain't come in at three o'clock in the morning. You know, All after right. the I, you know from the bar, like yo man, I had a I had a peaceful upbringing pretty much. And it's not saying that I'm better or or looking down on individuals, but it's like, yo, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I don't know this the the whole risky business and everything that I've been through as an adult. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I, I I didn't experience that. But we got a couple of voice notes. Play Can I play them. Hey, play I just came in when I heard you say you were from Philly. So, yeah. fellow Philly girl in the house, what part of the city hey. are you from? What's up, Kim? Buck, buck, buck. What up, Kim? I appreciate the honesty that you have with your children because that really makes them better as adults. Um, so, keep doing that, Ma. Thank you. Yeah, man. That's dope. That's dope. Cool, Kim. What up? That's yeah. dope. I don't know. I, I guess we kind of kind of spun a little bit out of control a little bit. <laughs> it's not out of control, but it it has a lot to do with it. Um, she uh, also for sure. talked, she also talked about women who solely focus on a man and don't focus on anything else. Okay, let's let's Ooh. say that woman that just wants to focus on getting a man and she gets him. What do you do with them? What do you do with it? It's not an iPod. It's, it's not an iPhone. You don't add apps to them. Um, what do you do with them? It's almost like they want to build a man to sit and just be at their beck and call um, whenever they need to feel like, oh, I got me somebody. But realistically, most women who solely want to, to consume a man, they have nothing. There's nothing else about them because they're not focused on shit. Yeah. I you know, I, I hate people like that. Like, you know, they want you to sit around and wait, wait, wait on the couch for them like Lawrence from Insecure. <laughs> like when when a nigga when a nigga like I and then I've been through that. When when I get cleaned up and I step out, like, oh, okay. Like now now I want you or now I want to deal with you or like you know, like women men go through shit too. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't have everything figured out. We go through an ugly phase too. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's just like, hey, man, that's sometimes you in a marriage. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 y'all go through these phases and you have to have the ability to grow with each other. And sometimes when you when you never seen uh the 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 change in in people and the growth in people, sometimes that could make or break your relationship. You know mm. what I mean? It take it take it take hard work to make your marriage work. It take work. That means you gotta you gotta cancel all this outside noise, all yeah. of it. Like whatever your homegirl saying, you better watch your mouth because guess what? They gonna be back together next week. You better shut up. Yeah. <laughs> or you ain't go- or you ain't gonna be welcome at their house. You better shut up. <laughs> Look at Cardi B. Like, girl, if that's the man you want, keep him to yourself. We don't want to know nothing. We that's don't want to know nothing. Yeah. Keep, like, like I said, yo, man, hey, they kids too. Though. What would you, like, like, they, they, listen, both, both of them probably come from some, some, some not so good households. You know, yeah. not, I don't know their personal situation, but we can kind of guess that, right? Mm-hmm. And then they, they still young. They, what, well, damn, they're not even 30 yet. And then you give them a few million dollars a piece. <laughs> and, and, and a couple houses around and, and and then they got millions of people all in your business. What do you do? 
Yeah. Like, 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 honestly, can you blame that? Can you blame him or her for acting the way that they do? It's just, it's like, mind your business, man. Like, yo, like, and people act like your uncle ain't cheated on your auntie or a guy or bring his side bitch to the, to the cookout. <laughs> Listen. And then his wife on Christmas. Like, yo, stop, stop <laughs> playing these games, man. Stop playing these games, yo. Stop playing these games. Like, like we ain't we ain't dealing with this personally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got some more voice notes though. Can we can we listen to those? Please. Hey guys. I'm I'm from originally North Philly and then Mount Airy. And now I'm down in Florida. Florida. Listen, people up top always get sick of it and move down south. Okay, sure. I'm taking it back. You, you had me cracking up at uh, Lawrence and Insecure. <laughs> <laughs> but what up, Paco? Um, you guys are both dope. Uh, I'm glad I got in on this talk. I've only, I, I'm a newbie. I've only been on the app for a few days. So um, it's chill. I, I, I've I think I'm following you both. If if not, I'm going to, and I hope you follow me back because I think we could have some some really dope conversations moving forward. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you for sure, for sure. Let me tell you, going back to marriage, when I got married, the thing the preacher told us was friends nor family should interfere with your marriage. So. I never discussed any details, and neither did my my ex husband. He, yes, he's my ex, but we're still cool. I just talked to him just yesterday. He called to check on me. We did not discuss outside details of our marriage. We talked to each other, so that's like my best friend. Mm. Respect. That's, that's that's beautiful, man. Like you know, um, that the, the crazy thing is, like, I mean, how many people? you know, listen to that advice though. You know what no. I mean? Like it's like it's supposed to be you, your spouse, and God. You know what I mean? And everybody else, even the children come, you know, after your spouse. And sometimes when you get into these blended families, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't realize that the children and then sometimes the wife or the husband which is, you know, hey, like I'm married now. And yeah. so the kids, they don't understand like, hey, this is I have to sleep with this person. I this I have to be happy. They have to be happy. Not saying that the kids' happiness isn't important and the things that they want and need aren't important, but your yeah. marriage come first. If, if If that's not right, nothing else is going to be right. Well, that's the problem because now we have generations of people who have an argument over you know if you cook as a woman as a wife who do you serve first or who gets the biggest chicken wing and to me I feel like today's people blend marriage like standards and values with my boyfriend and my girlfriend and it's not the same fucking thing um the only thing in a marriage that I would (laughs) want to hear as a mother um (laughs) Is if my daughters are in a marriage and their husband was beating their ass or like abusing their kids. Like, tell me, tell me, because maybe you in that marriage and you feel fucking helpless. But anything other than that, keep that with your your husband and handle that. But, you know, people today is like, that's run and tell it. Let me put it on Facebook and have an argument back and forth. Let me tell why I hate my husband this week or why I hate my wife this week or my wife ain't shit, you know, let me post it on IG. Let me do this. And it's like, like, I don't even follow the shade room because I don't like knowing other people's business that I ain't got nothing to do with. I feel it. Speaking of, speaking of the big piece of chicken, you ever seen some of these people's (laughs) kids? Is these you ever seen the movie Blind Side? That big nigga that was yeah. <laughs> that play, it, these kids be that big, like yo, I, ain't, I this nigga that ain't on my plate. This nigga that ain't my plate. Like <laughs> yeah, that good old demo. My friend, my friend, she sent me a picture of a fifteen-year-old on the football team, um, and she said, "Look, look at him." And this man looked like he's thirty years old, 
and you should see the women in the comments online shooting their shot at this little boy. It's crazy. But if it was on reverse, everybody would be in a fucking uproar about men shooting their shot on a, a little girl because that's what he is. Yes, uh, these, these foods are GMO. Like, you'll have 12 year old looking like they're 18. But at the same time, it's illegal. Yeah. These kids are big, man. They're these huge. kids are big. Arguing with these step kids. Listen. Step kid damn near picked me up my little ass. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Pull me down. Pull me down. <laughs> I need a man in the house. This nigga picking you up, man. <laughs> put me down, hey man. Just let yeah. we can talk about this. Just put me down. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> oh man. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I I I think is it a, is it a way? For women to understand what, how, and how they can get a man and how they can keep a man. Yes. Do you do do you think it's a science? Um. Do you think it's uh is, and, and like you said though, like I think people are just not honest with themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying, and just making personal adjustments and just and, and just growth. Like you know, certain things going to irritate this person. Mm-hmm. Why do you continue to do it? Because you think it's cute, and the world tells you that it's cute, and the world wants to see your your meme of being petty, and your world, the world wants to know, you know, how ridiculous you got, and he's still around, and he's still sticking there. Well, yes. maybe he's just sticking around until he finds a loophole and dips on your ass one day. For sure, I, 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 a man shouldn't or won't put up with your fucked up ass attitude. I don't care, like like you said, I don't care how people think it's cute. Like not not nowadays. And if I get married again, like yo, it's, it's going to be right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not. We not. I'm not dealing with nobody with all these like. Uh, these issues where they can't see nothing outside of themselves. Yeah. Their own happiness. And, and, and just people stop thinking just inside the box all the fucking time too, man. That Mm -hmm. things have to be one way. Well, my mom said it's supposed to be this way. Right. But guess what though? We not living. I keep telling people we not living in the same days. So if y'all want this big baller ass dude, the big baller ass dude may want you in the kitchen all day long. And then your attitude is going to be like, nah, I, I, I don't do that. This ain't that time. And, and women strong. Boom. So everybody need to, everybody need an attitude adjustment. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to be treated like you, like you supposed to be or belong in the kitchen, you don't want that treatment. Then stop treating that man like he's just the, 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 the breadwinner. And he's supposed yeah. to provide for everything. How about you do something for him? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I, honestly, though, like, why don't you, why don't you take women? If you married, you got a boyfriend. Take him somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Do so. I it's Blind told his ass. Yeah, like do something for. I ain't saying propose to him or nothing no, like that. No, Yo, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I didn't say that. Message. Mm-mm. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying none of that corny mess. Okay, and yeah. that's corny. No, I understand tradition and and a woman feeling special and 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 her needs should be should be met and promises should be kept. I, I, I'm a firm believer in all that. But nice, right? yo, like yo, your your man come home. Maybe he don't want to hear your mouth for about thirty minutes or an hour. Can he digress? Right. If, if if you ladies, if you ever wonder why your man is sitting in the car for an hour before he comes, listen. Out. <laughs> That's like my ultimate fear. I don't want to be in a marriage 
or a relationship <laughs> and I'm in the car for an hour before I go in my house. I don't want that. Like, if me, me personally, if I was married and my husband came in the house, even if I'm not on the phone, sir, I'm going to see you. I'm going to say, hey, or even give you a head nod. And I don't need nothing else. If you want to come over to me, come over to me. If you just want to go relax, take a shower, you know, go sleep, make yourself something to eat, watch whatever you want to watch, go do that. All these fake ass, you know, when your husband come home, he's supposed to put his his shoes down in his bag and he's supposed to come over to you and hug you up and want to know all about your fucking day. And, and you know, y'all got to have a candlelight dinner together. No, you're not. You're not. Like, I can't even fathom being married and having to see the person that I love and I adore every fucking day. Like, people do this. And I'm just like, how? Like, how do you constantly appreciate a person that does for you every fucking day and you see every fucking day with gratitude? I can do yeah. that with people that I have space between. I have time between. But I don't know what it's like to coexist in the same house under a mortgage or at least with a man. I don't know what that's like. So, I don't know. I don't know if marriage is something that's for me, but if I do get married, it's going to be hella unconventional. Yeah, but, but at the same time, though, I don't feel like a man, a man should have to run into the garage because um, you know, and, and a lot of times, like, women, you know, women just go right into it, too, though. Like, you know, and, and I, I'm the guy to be like, yo, you know, may, maybe you the problem. You know what I'm saying? When, when you start talking about Katie from work, <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess what this bitch did to me today and all this and I just like what did you do <laughs> you know, yeah. since, since you want to aggravate me I'm going to aggravate you <laughs> what did you do and if, if, if you run up to her the way you ran up to me when I first come in the house and that's probably the fucking <laughs> 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 no, I'm just saying, though, man. Like, can 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 somebody just come home and, and be peaceful and grab some, just relax, and then you know we can gradually talk about days over dinner and you know, because like I said, though, you never know what your man had been through. He didn't, he didn't almost maybe had to choke a white boy at work today. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just never, you know, just. Everybody deserve your personal time and space, man. It's, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully. You know, sometimes I feel like um, a lot of marriages work back in the day um, when women weren't so much outside of the household and men were. And I'm not saying women need to be in the house because that's where you belong because I don't believe in that. Um no. I, I, I listen. Like, I, I said it before. I said this years ago on a podcast, and I got so much slack. You know, is is no order, is no structure. You know, is is like is is no is no structure in the house anymore. But I feel like there can be like what I was getting at is the space and time away from the person you are married with. I feel like that was the key that kept marriages together because there was no texting you all day while you at work. There was no calling you when I want to when you at work. And when men would get calls at work from their house, they thought somebody was dying or was an emergency. For sure. That's the only reason why you call. But other than that, a, a woman is going to handle whatever she needs to handle at the house. Man. And you got to handle whatever needs to be handled when you get home. Yeah. But at the same time, that appreciation from a wife to a husband when he came home, it was there because that was actually time. Yeah. Call, call daddy at work, man. You just said a cuss word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and call him for something stupid. Like, what? You were cutting yeah. up in school? 
Oh, you about to get your ass worn out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got some voice notes, uh, Shane. I'm tripping. No, he didn't say sitting in the car for an hour before he come in the house. <laughs> but it's true. You're speaking words of wisdom and people need to listen. For those of us that have been married, you know, we know how to, uh, in, in retrospect, I got, I got married very young. I got married. That was 22. So I would never advise somebody to get married that young. But in retrospect, you know, you want to support your partner, keep your business private and do what you need to do to uplift him. Because in today's society, it is so hard for a black man. They need to come home to have a place of what I call respite where he can just chill. And he's not waiting out in the car because he don't want to deal with whatever you got going on. Right. Wow. To be honest with you, you go, you do not see every day with gratitude. You have ups and downs in marriages. There are some days where you're like, you know what, boo? I don't even want to hear you breathe right now. Uh, but then there are other days where you're really like grateful that you have this person in your life because that's your support system. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Y'all are cracking me up. It's true. You got to give that downtime, that time to decompress when you come home from work, whether you're male or female, because sometimes we females have a hard time at work, too, but especially black men. Um, but, uh, yeah, y'all have me cracking up. So I, I really I really want to schedule some talks, you know, with both of you so we can. Uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun. I'm with you, Kim. Oh, I'm with it too, uh, Kim. Uh, Kim, I'm Black Paco, um, and my podcast is Nuts and Guts. Get you some merch. Act like you know. Get you some merch. Shop She Gets It on Teespring. The link is in the bio. Don't act like I ain't tell you. Hit me up on the stereo app. Hit me up on Patreon. Hit me up on Red Circle. If you want to go ahead and cross promo, I'm here for you. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up and to my email, she gets it pod at gmail.com. Hit me up on she gets it pod on IG. I'm not hard to find. Let's get back into this show. Podcast and Shan, uh, she got like eight podcasts. Uh, <laughs> Why you tell? And she gets a podcast and um, cozy room and so what page you on bid, which is like a um a book club. But um, what you said is true, and even in like relationships, I've had like those days where you know the person comes by or I go by their place and they fall asleep and I'm just like looking at them have the audacity to have fucking peace to sleep around me and I don't I don't, I don't know I don't I don't want to sleep around a person that I'm trying to um you know give my time to when I know their time is busy but I feel like it's a um, appreciation that this person feels so comfortable with me that they'll sleep here or, or they'll relax around me and let's let their guards down because a lot of people have an issue today letting their guards down for reasons I understand because people have ill intentions when they get in relationships with people. And um, maybe it's me where I'm like super particular about the people I spend time with or um, I would like to actually give a fuck about the people I spend time with and not just be with them because they have a lot of money or they dress nice or they look nice or they can take me into rooms and places and meet people that I, I would never meet. Like to me, that doesn't mean anything. To me, it's all about like your character. Do I like you at the end of the day and in the morning when you ugly as fuck, when you, when you're sick and, and, you probably want your mama, but your mama ain't here. Can I, do I actually care about you to take care of you or make sure everything that you have is good? Um, can I be around you when you just don't feel like yourself? 
to me, if it ain't that, I have to question why am I here? Mm. I agree but with I don't, that. Wow. I, don't think, I don't think today's people look at the relationships that they're in in that way. And that's something that keeps me very solo dolo to myself because if it ain't that then it, then it has no value and I'm wasting my time and the older I get the more my time gets more important it's not the money it's not the um what can you get me it's the do you fill my space in my time that I give you a purpose do I feel like mm. I'm gaining something from you mentally or or spiritually do you completely shift my mood um, to a good place when I'm around you or or when I speak to you. And if you can't do that, then we have nothing to talk about. Mm. Mm. But I, I don't know. I, don't, I have never craved a man to be all up in his face all the time. And I had to learn that lesson in college when I was... Um, in a relationship with somebody who basically worked for himself and was busy in between working for two major labels um, as a, a, a producer. And sometimes he would be like, hey, you got class today? And I'll be like, no. And then he'll be like, well, I need to get some work done. So am I taking you home or am I taking you somewhere else? And I would at first fucking flip out or have an attitude about why I got to go home. You could just work around me. But growing up and being a creative person, sometimes the people that you love and you care about that fully don't understand what you're doing as far as your work, you need complete solitude. You need them to go the fuck away so your mind can be focused on that thing that you're doing. And it's out of respect that I learned now I need to get out this man's way so he could work. Like, this is how he feeds himself. This is how he maintains this lifestyle. Like, when I'm with him, I don't ever come out of pocket for nothing. I don't ever need nothing. But if I'm always in his face or always at his place or always want to go do some other shit, how the fuck is he going to maintain? For sure. But it takes a certain amount of maturity from a woman to be like, okay, let me get up out his face. Mm -hmm. you know I listen I you know just over I, I first of all your words are beautiful um I agree with it and I know I know you got a lot of uh you got a lot of women out there that that haven't met that le that that haven't reached that level of maturity yet where they can be honest with themselves and say that hey I fucked up or I'm fucked up I need yeah. help or I need to talk to somebody you know what I'm saying? And they don't understand the amount of drain that they putting on relationships or their significant other. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's just like they get a kick out of certain things, though. You know what I mean? Like, um, like I always relate like love, being in love. Like, you know, if you really you really cherish this person, man, you you hold that sacred. All right. You know what I'm saying? Just like you wouldn't show your man's uh, dick picture to your friends or family. That's how you should. That's that's how you should hold the words that he say to you. Yeah, you know, or or if y'all are pillow talking, you know, and he say something about someone, you know, you should you should hold that dear to your heart like you would, like you wouldn't show his 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 penis picture, <laughs> or or I you wouldn't. Like, no, after, no, no, that, no, no. after that relationship is it free game or not? <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's but listen though, after the relationship, nah, it, it's just it, it's just still uphold that way. Like it's certain things, like, guess what? It's certain things, you know, at the bad old relationships, if I'm not cool with people, I still yeah. don't run my mouth because it's tacky. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't shit on this person after y'all didn't work out. That's yeah. tacky. Like your problem with him is your problem with him. You know yeah. what I mean? Or or his problem with her, that's his problem. Like, yo, that is very in bad taste when you run your mouth 
about somebody that you used to deal with or you run around the streets talking about all the stuff he done told you in the comforts of your own bedroom. That's fucked up, yo. And, and, it's, and, and, and that's another reason why people can't keep nobody. It's, your, it's the whole package, your mindset, your, 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 your maturity level, you know what I'm saying? All that matters. You know what I mean? You know, you, you, if you're not on Twitter or, or, or all these other social sites and everybody else or starting up shit with everybody else, you'll be happy. When, when you, when you content in your relationship, when you in love, when you happy, you ain't got time to worry about what everybody else got going on. Nah, I missed that girl. Nah, bro. Like I've been, I've been at the house with my lady. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't caught none of that, fam. Yeah. Yo, if your main focus is her happiness and her main focus is your happiness, ain't no time for bullshit. Yeah. Ain't no time for cheating or nothing else. Which brings me to my next question. Okay. Um, why is the question or the command from most women today? Drop all your hoes for me. If y'all just like talking, y'all not married. I'm the person that believes if you're not married, you single. Um, why is it drop all your hoes for me? And the question not if if that's the person you want. Why do you have these hoes? Why do you have these other people? I feel like why do you have these other people? you're going to get more of the answers you need as to why this person does what they do, um, which can help you other than you commanding somebody to drop people. You don't even know why they have them there. Like for you, when you were dating and talking and you talked to multiple women, what was it why you had multiple women? Um, I put it like this. I, I'm like I said, that part of me is old fashioned though. Like when I'm like really serious about a person, that like a lot of people just kind of just fade out, especially when that one person is, you know, has my attention. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I don't think I don't. I, I think it's a blur line, like like or, or a thin line between like just kind of like juggling a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And really being serious with one person, and I think that's why people kind of uh, come a- come across that way, where it's just like, well, you know, we're not together, we're not committed, so I'm gonna see other people. Yo, that's fair game, but that's also saying that yo, you just kind of shopping around. Yeah, you know what I mean. So when you shopping around. You know, you probably shouldn't be staying the night. That person shouldn't be staying the night at your house because that's where those lines started to start to blur a little bit. And yeah. then it started to be like, oh, well, you was at my house and you got draws at my house and you still talking to X, Y, and Z. Like, that's where stuff started getting a little complicated, you know? And I don't think it has to get complicated at those points. I just feel like it needs to be a moment of clarity. You're asking me these questions because you want something more clear that I'm not giving you. So tell me what it is that you need at this moment that's clear in order to make my drawers being at your house or my toothbrush being at your house or me having a fucking drawer at your place okay. And I think that's that's what people don't talk about because they're worried about what the response is going to be. You know, if they blatantly come out and tell me the truth that, you know, I just really like spending time with you and I'm comfortable at your place. That's why my things are there. I don't really want anything more. They're scared of the fact that what am I going to have to do if I get this answer? And the answer is you're going to do what the fuck you feel like you should do, which is end whatever this is with this person. I feel like people claim they want responses for shit that they're asking that they're really not ready to receive. But a you lot know, of Keisha people... do that. Keisha Keisha do that one thing with her tongue, no. You know Shut what I'm saying? I may want to hang I may want to I may want to hang on to her for a little while. <laughs> and, 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 
and, and sometimes, sometimes that's what it is. But I will respect. I will respect a man that says, "You know what? Uh, I like that thing that you. I I like how you please me, say, but I really don't understand you on no other level, and and that be that, and um." <laughs> Oh shit! Hello. Yeah, I'm yeah. Here. People, people don't, people don't do that. People are not honest about those things when they need to be, and um, that shit's not gonna work. For sure. So, For sure. I, I don't know. I think I think honesty cures everything. Yeah. How do you now? Now, what what do you say to the women that disagree with? How you feel and and how homegirl feel and they may feel like y'all y'all wrong or you know and how how and that's one question. The second question is, um, uh, so we can wrap this up. Um, we got a couple voice notes too, but that's one question. The second question is, how do you feel being a person of your stature, but then you are a single person as well, so. It may look like from the outside looking in, well, hell, well, it ain't working for you. Who's the same? Because you what? single. This yeah. is this okay, okay. So let me answer your first question. So for cause the girl in the live, she said that a lot of women hate when I have these discussions because they don't want to hear it. And that's what it is. The women that don't want to hear what the lady was saying on her live, which was truth. And the women that will probably find something that I'm saying right now as problematic and she don't know what she's talking about because she don't got nobody. Who told you I wanted somebody at this moment? Who told you I wasn't doing my work to figure out what it is about me that I don't like, that I feel like I need to change before I involve another individual? There are days and times where I get on my fucking nerves. But I need to know what it is that I'm doing at those days and those times that's getting on my nerves. So I could be able to explain it to the next person that I'm with. Hey, um, I don't, I'm not feeling my best today or, you know, I'm not in the greatest mood. What would help me right now is this, is that possible for you to do for me right now? Is it possible that I can um, go somewhere right now and come back when I feel as though, I can be in a, you know, in a good discussion or be in good spirits to be around you and not bring you down in my shit right now. And, and, and if I can't get to a point where I could do that, I don't feel like I need to constantly put myself in a relationship. I don't feel like the, the ending, the starting, the ending, the starting of consistent relationships help people. I feel like sometimes people need to take whether it takes you a year, two years, three years, four years to date yourself. Go take yourself date out. Date yourself, to you. man. Go take yeah. yourself out. Go figure out what you like and what you don't like. People that you deal with sexually, try something strange and be like, hmm, that shit is not for me. Right. That way, when you actually meet somebody that you like and that topic comes up, you know what? I did try that. You know what? I don't yeah. like that. It and don't try me like that and you create your fucking boundaries like that you create your standards like that to me right now I call this doing the person I'm supposed to be with in life a fucking service yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like I need to be in a relationship right now because I'm not going to help that person for sure and, and, and I, I totally feel the exact same way and like you said like what is wrong we're going to breakfast by yourself. I promise you I just went to breakfast by myself. And it was just like, hey, you, you talk to people, you get to like you, you, you understand yourself. You you like yo, like I, I have no problem with traveling alone. I have no problem uh going to breakfast or dinner for myself. I'm treating myself, I'm treating myself as a king. And and I'm I'm relaxing, I'm having a good time. And it's just like, yo, I don't. A, a relationship shouldn't define you. Right. Or another person, you shouldn't have to want another person so bad that you forget who you are or what you stand for. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? You should know your, you should know yourself. Like you don't know yourself. Like Homegirl was saying, you don't even know what, what you like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Homegirl is just like, you, you, you don't even know the things that you like because this man told you what you should like. Yeah. Or this relationship dictated your life. And it's just like, no, nah, like, I'm, I'm comfortable coming home and it's quiet. Yeah. Hell, my, my daughter come over here because it's quiet. You know what I'm saying? She's like, nah, I, I, I want to do my schoolwork over there, dad. Yeah. Because it's quiet. And, you know, sometimes, honestly, I think We got like, some voice notes, too. Okay, as I say this, I'll play them. I feel like okay. being single for X amount of time and sometimes in the long run may do people a disservice because you start to get comfortable in being solo. And then once you start to engage with another person or communicate and something about them you may not like you 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 question yourself do i a talk to this person about the why behind this thing that they do or are or say that i don't like or do i b don't say shit and slowly like back up out of whatever this is because i find comfort in being by myself and then you have to question what the fuck do you want going forward do you want to be solo by yourself or do you want to learn how to incorporate another person into your life in some way and the answer for me would be a i want to figure out the why behind what this person said or does that i don't agree with so i can have more of an understanding and sometimes people are not mature enough to ask that shit to figure out what it is that they said or they did that you don't like because it comes with a reason why they do the shit that they do. But let me play this. Ooh, damn girl, you got a whole lot of speech here. (laughs) Marissa! I'm just just talking um, honest, honest facts. You know what? You said a mouthful because that is so true. You know, It's all about growth. You have to mature, as you stated, you know, to become the woman or man, you know, you need to be to have a stable, happy relationship or marriage. So you said the absolute truth. I applaud you guys and I'm digging the show. Thank you, Dirty Red. Thanks, Dirty Red. Dirty Red sound like I personally uh, wouldn't command anybody to do anything. Um, If I'm dating, um, I always come clean and stay straight out. Like, you know, I'm not a team player. So, um, you know, if we're going to try to date, it's we're going to try to date and see where this goes. Um, An old man, I was listening to a webinar one day about business actually had nothing to do with this, but he said, men and maybe Paco, you can chime in here. Men, have an intention when they deal with women. You're either going to be their friend, their freak, or their forever. So we as women need to ask the men, what are your intentions for me? Am I your friend, your freak, or your forever? And then you can make the decision to go from there. Whoa. Ooh, what do you think about that, Marco? Yeah, let's, before we play that last voice note, hey, yo, Kim hit it. First of all, thanks for all the 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 the, the chime ins. You know what I mean, uh, dirty red, uh, cool Kim. But yeah, I like I I totally agree. I, I think the two parts I was going to say is listen mm-hmm. and and watch for a woman. One women listen and watch. If the words don't match his action, the the you watching his actions then that should be able to tell you what his intentions are. So if I say, baby, you my number one girl and all I want is you and we gonna get married, you know, uh, playing Jagged Edge, let's get married. (laughs) Every time you get in the car or every time you're at his house. But 
you know, he stay in the streets till three, four o'clock in the morning, then mm -hmm. his words not matching his actions. You know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? Like you you can kind of gauge what a person's intentions are. And and not saying that everybody that stay out that late is on some bullshit, but are they really do you really want to come home to that? That's something that you have to answer for yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yo, That's Kim, definitely an right aspect that I never really understood why the general public kind of looks down upon people who are not in a relationship or are, are not married or kind of like cast aside when it comes to giving advice or giving their opinion on something. It's like, oh, you don't, you haven't been experienced it. You don't know what you're talking about. But if me not being married or being in a relationship, I'm having the same conclusions, the same answers, the same way of thinking as someone who is in a relationship, what's the difference then? Now there's no difference except for your prejudice. You're prejudging me because of yeah. me not being in the same shoes as you when we're having the same answer at the end of the day. Also, that means I'm mature enough to not be in a relationship with someone that A, I know I'm not ready for, B, I'm not really looking for anyone. And C, I'm not settling. Yeah. Mm. M333. Yes, that's facts. Yeah, I like all Paco, Paco look like he's still wearing penitentiary boxers. Baylor, shut up. I love you. I love, I, but I really love both of y'all, though, equally. <laughs> Well, they're probably saying a little bit more than I don't know. <laughs> I can't stand here, man. And why Paco emoji still look like a goddamn Puerto Rican insurance? Uh... <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> You're late, Baylor. I You're can't. late. <laughs> <laughs> Any yeah. any uh any last words, uh Shan? Let's get out of here. Um shit. Just just don't I I feel like people need to crave being a better person and a better individual over craving the idea of being in a relationship that they think they want. I think that well, I think that'll benefit you more in the long run. Yeah. What um what about people that's just defined by a significant other, like the person that's with a new person every every two weeks or every three months, like they got a new bay, this bay. You know, what about them? Do you have any words for them? Um you're empty as fuck. Um you just need to go visit somewhere and get lost in something that you've never been in and figure out like what the fuck about you uh matters or what what are you going to bring to another person? I feel like you're looking in too much and trying to fill in yourself with other people's shit and those people are are just temporary, but you 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 are your greatest investment. So just look into that shit. Like I don't feel like you need to constantly be spreading yourself thin with multiple people. I agree. That's Two more voice notes. You guys are both great. Um, I just scheduled talks with both of you. Um, see if the times work out. If not, we, we have to work something out because uh, uh, I, I have fun with you guys. I see it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it happen, Kim. For real. So. Uh I know, man. I know y'all had a dope-ass topic. I know Paco and Shan was coming with it, but uh, I had a show to record myself. Um, so I need to I need to catch up, man. I'm probably going to have to re-listen to... I got to listen to this, because uh, y'all got a lot of uh, feedback off of this. So I'm going to have to go back and listen to this. It's definitely beneficial. For sure. I, I think we both are going to post it, so it should be good. Yep, it'll be on both Well, platforms. guys, I'm getting ready to go to bed. Um, I already scheduled a talk with one of you. Um, Paco, you have to follow me back so I can schedule something because uh, I know we're going to have fun. Yes, Kim. Nope. I got you, Kim. I'm with it. All right, Paco, let these people know where to find Nuts and Guts. Yo, Nuts and Guts is on all the podcast sites. You know what I'm saying? From Anchor. 
uh, the Apple uh, Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher. Um, I'm not on SoundCloud, um, but whatever. You can find me. Uh, oh, I'm on Spotify too. So those are the most popular sites where I'm at. Also, uh, you can find me at uh, Black Paco, B O K P A C O, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. Um, and you can email me at PacoPod, that's P A C O P O D, at yahoo.com. And uh, the podcast is Nuts and Guts. Nuts and Guts <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> where where pod- can they find you at? <laughs> my podcast is She Gets It Pod. Um, hashtag She Gets It, all caps She. Um, lowercase everything else um, I'm on Twitter I'm on IG email is she gets it pod at gmail.com any questions if you want to collab if you want to do like a um, sponsorship about your business or anything on the show I'm with it um, I'm free game always you know willing to help anybody I don't feel like hogging information or knowledge is going to help anybody so um, just hit me up but thank y'all for listening I appreciate it and I'm going to give you can give one more final thought I'm going to give one more final thought Mm -hmm. and the topic of the show is why he really don't want you and it could the answer is it could simply be that he's working on himself boom He's not under it could, And you're not listening to him either though. Like if he, he's telling you, he's telling you what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have to listen to each other. We're, like people get into these situations where they feel like I can change this person. Or like you said earlier, Shan, I can wear this person down. Yeah. I can cook for him. Yeah. I can suck his dick. I can yeah. do all this, and he's going to want to be with me. No, let, let me tell you this: I have a. Go ahead. I've appreciated the extra fabric softener and and fresh laundry detergent that women put on other men's clothes when they come over my house, and I gotta smell it. Oh wow! So, with that being said, that means that that's not going to keep anybody. People are going to do what they want to do. And maybe he doesn't want you because that's not the person you're supposed to be with in the first place. Maybe you might be a great fucking person. That person is not at a stage in their life where they could recognize it. Mm. I agree. That's it. Yo, you listening? You listening to the Nuts and Guts podcast? And what other podcast? You, she gets uh, you gonna... <laughs> She hey. gets. Hey, this is this is called a dual podcast ship right now. Yes. This is a dual podcast. Yes. No, but have- um, I I appreciate you, Sharon. Listen, uh, we- I promise you, like, yo, our conversations are dope off air, people. Yeah, and they are dope on air. And uh, yo, I I want to continue to do this. You know, maybe w- once, twice a week, whatever. You know what I mean? So it's I'm dope. With it. I'm with it. Often, sure. pa- Paco will call me on a Facetime or a regular call. And he'd be like, we need to record this. And I'd be like, maybe later. Let's schedule it. So I'm I'm just happy I caught you at a good time. And I'm happy for to sure. send a black man off that works for himself so he could get rest and make his money tomorrow. For sure. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You know what I'm saying? I never, I never, for the, for the audience, I never uh, was a security guard. And I never, I, I, you know, I, I got too much pride. <laughs> Like, like, bro, are you crazy? Like, you do you understand? Do you understand? I got to go around my friends. Do you understand how I clown people? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking... <laughs> I'd be home. Look, I would be homeless before I'd be a security guard. Matter of fact, I'd go work at McDonald's before I'd be a security guard. <laughs> I can hide in the back somewhere. Like, no, keep me behind. Like, put me on the little the trays to get the meat out. Get put me behind everybody. Like, <laughs> Shut up. yeah, I'm not. I'm not making no rounds. You know what I'm saying? Hey, at eight thirty, you gotta make your rounds. No, we're not doing that. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>